Hello, and welcome to Squeeze and the Shrimp. I am the Shrimp. And I am Squeeze. And today, we are going to be talking to you about our top five dream bikes. Yeah. Now, we set a couple of parameters for this little experiment, and one of them was we had infinite money. And infinite garage. Infinite garage space. And uh, we could pick any bike from any time period. Doesn't matter if it's still like available or, yeah. you know, if it, you know, was a one off, whatever. Yeah. Yep. And also we couldn't pick any radically custom bikes. So we couldn't pick like. I, <laughs> I most definitely may have broken that rule. We couldn't pick a bike that there was only like one made of. Yeah. It had to be like a production bike that you could realistically go out and buy yeah. if you just had the right pocketbook and you found one for sale. Yeah. Um, I, I have maybe six then. <laughs> okay. Because I, I have, yeah. All right, we're going to work up from when we picked, uh, we each picked five, so you're going to get ten, and we don't know what each other's picked because we thought that'd be more I, fun I, I for went, you. I went first on the uh, the last one of these five lists. You go you go first this time. All right, so my, my fifth pick is a Harley-Davidson WLA uh, like World War II era, 1942 to 45, uh, motorcycle. Um, okay. And I picked that because it's cool. And also it was pretty ahead of its time and it has a couple of interesting, like quirky features to it. And it's a quirky bike. It's, it's not at all fast. It has 25 horsepower. It's it's not a great bike by today's standards, um, but if you're gonna get something that is, especially if you're trying that, you know, Warbird kind of like, I wanna have a bit of Americana that is war related. It is yeah. super accessible um, as far as like, you can't park a tank in your garage very easily. Yeah. But it yeah. is, it, it, you can park a motorcycle in your garage. Yeah, and um, outside of like a, a, a Jeep, yeah. You know, like outside of oh, a Jeep. Oh, Willys, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that, I actually think out of the Jeep and the and the Harley, I, I think the Harley's more practical and more modern and funner yeah. to, I, and not funner to drive because it's a motorcycle, but like more comfortable to ride. It's going to be closer <laughs> to what you presently drive yeah. than that Jeep is. That, uh, a Willys Jeep, it, it definitely felt like it was designed in war era and it it, it, it was put together. It, yeah. You can say it was put together, yeah. but also like there's military, um, like the Harley feels like it's a production bike the military bought a little bit more than the Willys Jeep is definitely a, this is a military vehicle. If you ever look at a modern Humvee, yeah. that thing is not ready to be a civilian drive around. Yeah, and, and a funny thing is, so the WLA is a Harley-designed motorcycle. Harley also produced another motorcycle during World War II using BMW's design, and it to date is the only uh, Harley-Davidson ever manufactured with a boxer engine. Um, so that's uh, a little you know, fun nugget. Uh, another fun thing about the WLA is it also is like the stick shift, like suicide yeah, yeah, shift. Yeah, it's, it's a suicide shift. Um, and the other real fun, quirky thing about it is it runs really low compression uh, so that you can run it off of like 73 octane. So like if they were getting like really shitty gas in North Africa or, you know, you know war-torn Europe, it could run on it, just yeah. about any fuel well, that could run a combustion engine. Not even that, but like they didn't have terribly good refining then. Like yeah, refining's reason, definitely gotten a lot they, better. There's a reason they put lead in everything. Yeah, because yeah. knock was to the point where it was blowing up engines. Um, so yeah, like it does have a lot of like fun quirks to it. I, it looks cool too. It, it does look cool. Um, Wait until you get up my list. <laughs> um, so number one on my list. And number five. Number, number five. five. We're yes, working backwards. Me. Number five. Number five on my list uh, is is the one that I totally broke those can you get it <laughs> rules and really a little bit of a, a a chance for me to sit on a soapbox here. Where's my fucking flying car? Right. Um, 
it would be really easy to take like a paraglider and like build it around a motorcycle and be like, okay, I have a, you know, there's a guy that did that. He built like, uh, he took a motorcycle and then he built like one of those like gyro jet. Yeah. Like, yeah. Planes like, around I want, it. I want that. Yeah. I want to be able to be like, fuck this traffic, go yeah. off a side road I, and fly someplace. The, the problem with it is it's not practical, right? Oh, it's like, not practical at like, all. It's stupid. You can't, it, yeah. It's not like you can just like take off out of your driveway. No, like you no. need, you still you need, still need like, a, dr- yeah. a runway or a lake bed or something like that. I, I just want like, I want it. I want a flying motorcycle so bad. Um, there is another, uh, there's a company that's doing like a, okay, it, it controls a lot more like the speeder bike on, you know, from Star Wars, but it's basically a big quad. Um, they, it's not open for public. It's open for agricultural because they didn't want to just have a bunch of, you know, like they wanted to make it a useful object first. Yeah. Um, so none of my things that are there are a hundred, like, that, that you can buy, but so, I do have I do have up my list. So, you, so your number f- your number five is you get to go on like I'm, Adam I'm, Savage's like one day builds and oh, builds yes. like a flying Dude, motorcycle. Okay, you could just say <laughs> you could just say if I was on Adam Savage's one day builds, that right there is my bike. Like even if it doesn't fly, whatever bike I just made. So do you have a proper number five? That's not like I've got I've got two number twos. Okay, all right. so. <laughs> Just because I can't be normal, man. Not, right. not, right. You're never going to get it. Okay. Uh, my number four pick okay. is a bike from the 60s, but it is also tied to World War II. Okay. And I'll, I'll see if you can guess this one. It is the Triumph TR6R650. 1962. Tied to World War II. Yeah, if you guys get this, leave leave it in the comments because yeah. I'd like to know if you guys get this one. No, I'm not getting it. All right, so now uh, uh, lock your answers in, and I'll tell you right now what it is. It is that is the bike that Steve McQueen rode in the Great Escape okay. to to the chase and jump scene, and they kind of gussied it up a little bit to look like a World War II era bike. But because they really were kind of doing things that those World War II bikes would not have not been do. able to yeah, do, yeah. Um, they used, that do that. yeah, they used, and, and Stephen Queen, who was a big fan of Triumph, and actually owned that, owned one of these bikes, um, they used uh, the, the TR6R uh, 650, mm-hmm. and Steve McQueen was a bit of a daredevil, everybody knows, he, he liked to race, and he really wanted to do that jump scene, and the production company was like, no, it will not way. allow him. And the gentleman, and I, I should have wrote his name down. I, I can't remember the stunt guy who did the, the actual jump. Um, but he apparently, like, looked at the stunt, and he was like, I'll try that one time. Like, I'll try that one time, but I'm not going to push my luck more than the once. Yeah, you get, Otherwise, you get, I'm one, going to, you get I'm, one take. I'm going to hospital. Yeah. <laughs> so he got it on that first. I think he did a couple of practice, you know, runs to, you know, measure and gauge his speed and distance. But the real, you know, go was it was that was it or it wasn't going to be in the film. Damn. Um, but yeah, so that's my bike. And that is how a 1960s Triumph is tied to World War II. So, uh mine um you know that world war ii harley i want the bike from uh raiders of the lost ark oh the yeah, sidecar yeah, yeah. i want the yeah. sidecar because yeah or or uh, or are you talking about uh last crusade no or? last crusade yeah last yeah, crusade last crusade, yeah, last yeah, crusade. Yeah, yeah. um where a it is like it is that classic World War II, I think that's the Beamer that, that I, I think it, uh, I don't remember what actual name that goes on it. But the, the important part to me is I want I want a sidecar. Yeah. And be able to, you know, put the go full war, war, you know, reenactment style with it. Make sure I have the, you know, the proper World War II uh, fire extinguisher, like down yeah. to that, like. If I'm going to go and get a classic X, Y, or Z, I want to make it like the stitching is in the right pattern, kind of like take it to that level of uh, 
it's that's a another pretty quirky and that kind of also shows you like the age of the the boxer engine and yeah how kind of like i'm not the hugest fan of the boxer boxer well, that's engine your but, legs don't fit um but it does kind of show you like how venerable that design is yeah that it's still it's still being used it's and good things and bad things about it it it's still being used <laughs> yeah um, that being said, like internal combustion really hasn't had too many massive, like world ending changes. That, that the, is the, true. The, yeah. the winkle happened, but it, it also, it happened and it's done. Yeah. Um, at least for right now. Uh, so yeah, that's my, my number four. Um, what's your, my number three pick is, um, I'm now we're kind of got into a modern, modern bike. Uh, my number three pick is the arch, uh, method one, four, three, or, and I put an or there just because the Method 143 is like, it's not a like custom bike. It is production, but I think they're only making like 25 of them or something. Whatever. Um, so I put slash yeah. uh, KRGT1, like pretty much anything from, from Arch, which if you guys don't know is uh, Keanu, Keanu Reeves, Reeves. Who, who's a giant motorcycle enthusiast. The biggest motohead. Um, um. Also, his, if you see any of his videos, like, you just understand how much of a down-to-earth guy that dude is. Yeah. By I, the way, uh, Keanu, if you watch this, yeah. um, please come ride with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Arch Method 143 or uh, 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 KRGT1. Either one, yeah. I, they're bikes that you go and you get fitted. They fit them to you. They are a work of art. They're Before absolutely. they fit them to be exactly yeah, what you want. They're yeah. absolutely beautiful. A lot of the parts on it, they manufacture in house. And, you know, like Keanu's not one of those guys, too, that just owns this company and, like, some dude, like, runs it for him and he just kind of, like, does commercials and shit. Yeah. Like, he actually has a lot to do with it because that's his passion project. That's what he enjoys, you know, doing when he's not doing films. And,. Out of all of the bikes on my list, that is probably like the one that I'm. You might actually pony the money. I might. I might actually. Yeah, okay. I might actually plunk down and get it. I mean, I think they're right around like 70, 80 grand for the the, the KR GT one, which is a, a huge amount of money for a bike. But considering what you get, you know, you're you're getting like a bike that's been really built to you, and there's like a lot of performance and tech and and a lot of cool stuff that's in that bike. Um, and, you know, just to put it in perspective, like that's, you know, what you would pay for a low tier Porsche or, yeah. or a, a, a BMW M1. So for a guy like one of us who does a motorcycle podcast and rides our motorcycle to work every day, yeah, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it makes, it, it's, it's not, it's a, bit, it's a bit much, but at the same time, like you could argue yeah. You, could, you could make that art. I could, I could see that argument and nod my head instead of just being like, yeah, Rah. yeah. Um, okay. What's your three? Uh, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take this and make it a little bit darker. Okay. Uh, you, you may even say that it gets a little uh, shaded in here because I'm definitely doing a black shadow. Like I want some black pencil. shadow. Yeah. Um, another super classic, but that thing broke so many people's minds on what a motorcycle could be. Yeah. Um, it was years and years above itself as far as the speed and the handling, um, other than the braking. Um, you get one good brake in it, and, and then you have to <laughs> wait for the brakes to cool down after about three hours. Um, but it it's so iconic. Um, it is. I would say it's like the, the, you know, I mean, what was it, 54? Yeah. Uh, was like kind of the golden golden year. That was one of those bikes, I think, that really took the motorcycle world into performance era. Yeah, no, it, it you know, changed. Like without, without the Vincent Black Shadow, you don't have like a Ducati Super Legera. You don't have a CBR 1000RR. Like it was, it was the beginner of... Like the envelope. That was the envelope pusher. Yeah, of of not a custom this one guy got a bike and he changed everything it was all the things to make a race bike that you could just go in and buy. You just get on and just go incredibly fast um i mean stupidly fast for the quality of the roads and the safety equipment they had yeah. stupid but yeah. i still want to do that <laughs> oh, oh 
And the, my problem with it is um, if we're, you know, in dreamland of, you know, Infinite Garage, I would need Jay Leno's mechanic because <laughs> I would look at that and be like, I can't put a wrench on it. I, um, do I, I don't trust myself changing the oil. Uh, like, yeah, there, there's something there that it's, it, it's not, it is a little, like, it is holy grail to me. Like, 100%. Right there. Yeah. So, okay. What's, uh, what's my number deuce? two bike? is a Ducati V4 Super Legera. Okay. Right? Modern, super, super, super modern. sport. Uh, it's loaded with tech. Um, it's pretty much one of the fastest bikes you can get. It, you know, top speed is like 230, 240 miles an hour. It weighs only 335 pounds. Yeah, like. So power to weight ratio is just. You can steal it just, out of a square in someone's uh, wall. Yeah, I mean like. <laughs> I like I could deadlift that with you on it, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it, it's uh, uh, it's like ungodly light, as the name implies. Super leger. It is, I mean, it is super as close light. to GT, um, to MotoGP as as you yeah. can get a, a street legal bike. Um, all you really have to do is take the lights off and put stickers on it. Yeah. Um, and I mean, there are some that are technically closer but that is one of the few that this are, one's you know. this one's street legal i wanted to pick all bikes that i could that i could drive to a track yeah or drive to work yeah um, and, the, and the super leger is definitely street legal. mine's close to that except my big thing on my ducati um i'm run for my second it's a ducati 999 uh that was my wallpaper Oh, on yeah, my yeah, computer, yeah. it was my poster in my bedroom. You want that nasty dry clutch sound too? Oh, <laughs> do, I want to sound like I'm gargling rocks because it it does sound it. There is something Ducati about that. Um, and you're gonna need uh, Jay Leno's mechanic. For yeah, no, I'm definitely you. gonna need it for that. Um, there's, uh, but the thing is, is I'd be okay wrenching on it. Like there yeah. is a little bit of dream. It was the thing that was on my poster when you you know. Look at an old petrol head, and he's like, "Yeah, I wanted a Lamborghini when yeah. the original like that bull first got put on I the think, car." Yeah, de I definitely think Ducati's the Ferrari of. Oh um, yeah, and I mean you can make the, the argument on world. Moto or uh, Moto Guzzi, and, and there's a bunch of a Italian little bit, bikes, yeah, Gusta, but, but Ducati's the du like the there. It's like there are a bunch of Italian sports cars, but like. Ferrari yeah, is Ducati's, the most enduring one, and, only, and Lambo's close. Not only that, but Ducati and Ferrari both red is their yeah. their, their default color. So, yeah. you know, there, there's that. Um, but just to even up with my number six is not a true bike, uh. like, in that frame of mind of the thing that was on a poster on my bedroom, um, the uh, Buell Lightning, mm. that was... I wanted one of those, and I was so sad when Harley stopped making Buell yeah. because there were a lot of really cool, interesting things that that that, that company did, and I totally really understand. Ra really radical stuff. Yeah, like, like really they radical shook stuff. up, and then they, they just stopped shaking <laughs> up. But Buell's a different story. And I, um, I think Buell was one of those ones where like people were really intimidated by the, the radical shit going on but with now their bikes. like half the stuff that was radical on it is is mainstream on every sport bike yeah um so uh there's that like either one of those i'd be okay with i want the ducati 999 in my garage i want to spend some time on the buell lightning i yeah i don't care as much if it's in my garage um but the the 99 I, yeah yeah i i want that so uh 999, if you had to pick between the 999 and the, the, and, the, and, the and the Buell. 999. Okay. At, at every time. Um, the 999 was the one I drooled over. The Buell was the one that was the sensible 16-year-old choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's that. Yeah. Um, Okay, so now we got that top holy grail, the one that you desperately want. All right, so I'm going to just read some of the specs. Okay. And I'm going to see if you or anybody out there guesses this. Okay. So, it weighs 500 pounds. Okay. It has a top speed of 125 miles an hour. Okay. It's 998 cc's. Okay. And it has drum brakes. Yeah, 
uh, my uh, throw, throwing numbers at me like that, you know, I, I'm so shitty with the names that I like. What's my sister's name? Number one with a bullet, Vincent Black Shadow. Okay. I, I also have the Vincent Black Shadow on my I list. I thought it was going to be your number one, but I, I, mean, I didn't have those numbers memorized. It's like, just so, it's like, you know, the, there were a lot of motorcycles that came before it. Yeah. But the Vincent Black Shadow hitting the market was such a, a like, game changer. It just, it just changed so many things. It changed so many people's outlooks on motorcycles. And the other thing too, is that, you know, for you and I, the generation that was before us, those guys were really inspired by the Vincent Black Shadow, mm-hmm. you know? So there were a lot of guys in the, in our, in the previous generation who got into motorcycles and the Vincent Black Shadow was their poster. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was their, <laughs> you know, so. I think I have a little bit of nostalgia for the Vincent Black Shadow because it was the bike that like my uncles wanted to own and you know that 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 was the bike that was on yeah. their wall so you know you want the thing that your your uncles the, want the people or, you look you know, up to yeah. yeah no so my family was never really like my mom and dad had ridden previously but they weren't motorcycle like yeah not geeks, they weren't they weren't geeks, geeks. It, yeah. um so like that wasn't some like yeah. But your your uncles were definitely but yeah. There's so many people that like they wanted a Vincent Black Shadow. You For know, they, a while, they, it they, held they, the land speed record. Like yeah. that that thing was just 125 so, miles yeah. an hour was was. I mean that's in in. I mean speed is so fast so like easy and cheap now. Like it's so it's so cheap. I to can get hit 125. Fast. Yeah, it, on a it's not a problem. CC. Not a problem. Yeah. Right. Um, the, 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 the thing about, you know, the Vincent Black Shadow is just to give you an idea is that let's say, I think it's the, the, if you take the Ferrari Testarossa, which in the eighties, I'm I'm talking about a motorcycle made in the, in the fifties. Yeah. Right. But if you take the Ferrari Testarossa now, it's incredibly slow. It's like, like Toyota Avalon. Like, yeah, it's by today's standard, it is fucking it, dog. It, it is a cruising vehicle. Only. Yeah. 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 And I mean, like, there's like a bunch of other like weird things that happen with that car, too. Like, you know, if you've ever watched any of the like Top Gears where they take like something like that out and they're like, yeah, we uh, couldn't like break hard with it. And we had to like start it for this long. And, you know, it, it is wrought with problems. Yeah. And the Vincent Black Shadow is not so much that. I mean, it, it's. It's it it still is a vehicle made in the fifties. It's still a vehicle made in the fifties, right? But if you have one that starts up, you can start it up and ride it around town. Yeah. It's not going to be as shitty of an experience. Which as, may like, say something for how much motorcycles have come since then and how far ahead of its time it was. Yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. Like it's saying both of those things. It's saying both of those things because if you get other bikes from the fifties. It is not the Vincent Black Shadow. Cue both of our World War II like yeah. pulls because they yeah. they didn't change much since then. Um, there was a lot of surplus, and that's part of the reason. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah. a couple of a couple of things, and you know, not to say that you couldn't cafe out of Vincent Black don't, Shadow. Don't. It's so but pretty. <laughs> I would I would cry heresy to anybody who modifies an original Vincent Black Shadow. If you if you still had one that was like pristine out of the box, yeah, that I, is that is a that is an expensive bike. Yeah. Oh, it's it's probably the most ex, it's definitely the most expensive one. If if I were legit gonna go out and buy one of the ones off my list, that's definitely the most expensive. It, I don't one. think it's the most expensive on my list. Well, let's hear your one. Okay, um, fastest production bike ever made. At what time period? At, since motorcycles started to when we filmed. Okay. It doesn't have an internal combustion. Oh, Jesus. Yes, I definitely did a Y2K. <sighs> I'm sorry, but you take a Bell helicopter engine and you slap it between two wheels. I want to fucking ride it. Yeah, so <laughs> if any of you out there watch Jay Leno's Garage, he owns one. It, it, 
if you pull up too close behind this motorcycle, <laughs> it will melt your the, the front bumper off of the vehicle because yeah. it is a jet it's a, engine. It's a jet engine. Um, they technically, like, it is production in the sense of, I think they this made is, 23 of them or whatever. It's definitely something that I feel was born out of, like, golden age comic books. Oh, it's, you know? No, it's no. Like the it, Rocketeer's jetpack. If yeah. you had a motorcycle, that would be it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, no, it's... it. A bunch of firsts on it, like it was the the first yeah. production bike. Bunch that of had, lasts on it too. <laughs> it was the first pro- first production bike that had an in-screen uh, dash on it because yeah. if if you come out of the bubble to turn your head to check your your blind spot, it'll break your neck. Yeah, arguably, like I don't think anyone's tried it, but also no one tried it. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, no, that is that is definitely if I if I had a holy grail bike. Just because it's so balls to the walls. I wonder how many, do you know how many there are in the world? I'm going to have to recheck that number because me and numbers. Yeah. So uh, let me, let me, let me. I know it's relatively low. It, no, it was, it was one of those. It just barely meet, met production values. Um, And the, the company that makes them, uh, their bread and butter is putting jet engines in super, uh, super boats. So like you throw two jet engines in a uh in a you know boat and then see how fast it'll uh you know go over calm water because if there's a bump it's going to deconstruct itself yeah um uh i mean i'll i'll give you this this is not a this is not a bike that made my list, and it's not a bike that I would probably ever own. Yes, it, it's it's a just because it's such a so it's such stupid. a it's so stupid. <laughs> but I I pr- produced from two thousand to two thousand five. It has a uh, Rolls Royce two fifty C eighteen turbo shaft. Um, only a two speed because it's yeah. it's a turbo yeah. shaft. Yeah. Um. It is kind of. It would be kind of neat to have a motorcycle with a Rolls Rolls Royce powertrain. That's what I'm like, saying. That's like it, super baller. It, it runs on <laughs> diesel, kerosene, or jet A. Um, <laughs> diesel uh, or kerosene. Diesel, kerosene, or jet A. Like, how 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 annoying is it when you you know there's no gas there, all you get is gasoline shops around, so you have to go to the local airport to pick up fuel. <laughs> um, where I, is it? I don't see, uh, at least what I'm looking at, I don't see a, a total number uh, made, but it can't be that much. Yeah, it was it was super low as far as, uh, yeah, made by Marine Turbine Technologies. Um, uh, Guinness Book also considers it the most expensive production motorcycle. So. I you know. don't doubt it. I mean, let's see. I mean, you're in fucking supercar territory. Oh, no. $175,000. Yeah, no. But what was the name of this episode, my friend? Yeah, yeah. I get it. It was Dream Bikes. And that's why I was like, yeah, I see your... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but now take 15 years after the Y2K came out at 100 grand. Yeah. It didn't depreciate. Yeah. I definitely guarantee you some of those went up flagpoles. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, no, I... <laughs> and into a lot of guardrails. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is, it's stupid, but I want one. I, I mean, I can, I can definitely appreciate its existence. I like things that are different and odd and unique, and, and that is all of those things. I wouldn't want to ride it around a track. I wouldn't want to have to turn in that. It it does have a long wheelbase and the rake's not great, but at the same time, and you're also doing at, at like... the speeds you're capable <laughs> of going. I want that stability. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what's the top speed achieved on that? Like, do you know, I, I know that they had like a, some like 500 horsepower version. Yeah. Um, Came 320 out of the factory. 250 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it like you're looking, what? 30, 40 miles per hour more for motorcycle uh, speed records. Yeah. Like. Yeah. 
What the hell, man? Come on. Wow. If uh, if you want to see that biker, I think uh, I'm pretty sure uh, Leno owns a Black Shadow too. Yeah. No, and Leno owns a lot of things (laughs) that are on my list of things I want to like stand in the same room as. Let alone be able to like not put my fingerprints on. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, uh, so anyway, that's our, uh, top five dream bikes, collective 10. We hope you got you guys, an extra one uh, for free because I'm an idiot. Yeah. We hope you guys, uh, had fun with us. If uh, you did, uh, subscribe. Yeah. Hit our comments. Tell us what your top five dream bikes are. Mm-hmm. If, uh, if you had infinite money and infinite garage, um, or and... if I got any of the facts about mine wrong, <laughs> tell me about it because it's the internet and you're I'm sure. going to anyways, so I might as well say it. <laughs> but if you like the video, hit like, hit subscribe, visit our Facebook at squish.moto, visit our Instagram at squish.moto, squish.moto. visit our website, squishmoto.com, where you can buy some shirts, trinkets, bottles, stickers, and whatnot. And yep. Show we got us good you things like going on there. Yeah. It's a cool logo. Yeah. Um, Other than that, have yourself a wonderful day. Peace. See ya. You get busy, me. Go get busy, me. <laughs>